Hey, everybody. Um, nice to see you all here. And I see a couple familiar names in the chat. So thanks for being here. Um, my, my intention for this uh, next uh, chunk of time is just to share my passion uh, for this work. I think you'll hopefully feel it <laughs> come through the screen. And um, I'll give you a little background of, of why this matters to me. Um, but also really want to use this session to get practical as well. And I think it's important when we do these kind of talks that we don't only talk in theory about what could be possible, but actually things that we can do. Um, and I'll share some things that I've already done um, and some mistakes that I've made along the way as well, <laughs> so that um, it's not just all, as I say, you know, puppies and sprinkles and everything is great. Um, but my intention is to leave you with um, some practical activities and hopefully to, to evoke some thinking and questions um, to really think about what you can do to move this forward. So just a little bit about me, I am from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which those of you who are maybe not from the states that's in Southwestern Pennsylvania, kind of down in the corner. Um, and I have been in this profession of people, uh, HR, uh, technology operations, culture change for 22 years. Um, and I've had the fortunate a uh, good fortune to work for a lot of companies that um, are very diverse. So starting out with a uh, very successful startup back in the late 90s. So everyone do the math about how old I am. Um, and um, getting to be in a people development environment back then. And that really shaped how I um, grew up professionally thinking about people, how we work together, how we create uh, practices that really engage people and uh, the, the joy of collaboration and not having to be experts. And then uh, subsequently, when I left that organization um, and worked for other companies that were more traditional in the practice of people, ops, and human resources, it was frustrating um, because my instincts were always to be collaborative and let's create the solution. And of course, let's respect the laws, but you know, let's also not have to be cookie cutter about things. 10 years ago, 11 now, met my now husband, who was a software developer, very passionate about extreme programming and was talking about this scrum thing. And I thought, you know, I like to work that way too. Everything you're talking about makes sense to me. I want in. And at that time, there was maybe a little bit less um, openness and not because anyone was being closed, but there was a little less openness to bringing these principles and practices into the work that we can do in our organizations outside of technology. So I've been on this mission for 11 years um, and just a couple uh, quick things. And I do see a couple Agile People colleagues. I um, am a member of the Agile People community um, and was the first uh, US team member of Agile People. Um, we teach classes through IC Agile around agility and HR in people practices among other things. I also am a Scrum trainer with Scrum Inc. and created with them last year, the first ever Scrum in HR certification class. I'm super proud of that and it's been a great collaboration. So let me jump us in. Um, and the first thing I wanna do, I'll share my screen in the chat. I'm just gonna ask a few questions. Uh, would love for you to just respond uh, at your interest on these first few questions, just to get us checked in and connected a little bit. Okay, so question number one. What attracted you to this session today? What attracted you? Why are you here? Go ahead and pop that in the chat. No one's saying, you know, big fan of Beth. No, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> totally kidding. Oh, it's maturing. Thank you. Curiosity. We need it. Thank you. Curiosity. Curiosity is one of my uh, number one character strengths. I am infinitely curious myself. Um, it's great, Kathy. Welcome. Um, I'm just excited to have you all here getting practical about being agile in HR. The fun thing is I will, I will share a lot of stories with you because I have led uh, large organizations of HR, uh, one of the largest employers in the state of Pennsylvania, I was the head of corporate uh, talent acquisition, HR business partnering and campus programming for the corporate division, about 5,000 people. I've also led people development and ops at some smaller tech firms along my journey. Um, so I'll share stories along the way. Um, yeah, and Deepika, thank you. You so get it. Um, Scrum fails without a strong people focus. All right, question number two. Be honest, no, no one's feelings will get hurt. One word that describes how you see HR. Red tape, thank you. 
people police. Yeah, that's the worst, right, Kathy? <laughs> what else? How else do you see HR? Yep, company reps, process keepers, policy keepers, outside the business, gatekeepers, mediators, uh, gatekeepers of talent, underestimated. I like that. Uh, enablers, far from the reality of business. Yeah, and, and it runs the gambit. It, it does um, hurt my heart a little bit that we're not farther along. And I think there's a lot of shaming and blaming that you know, continues to happen in organizations. And oftentimes uh, someone told me once that if I actually like people, I should have never picked a career in HR. And that just made me crazy because I, I truly love people. And that's why I got into this profession. Uh, the Toby reference, for those of you who don't get it, uh, yeah, reach out. <laughs> uh, you know, we don't want to be Toby and we don't want to be Catbert if you follow the Dilbert cartoons as well. Um, but again, there's opportunities for us to do a lot of good. And that's what I'll, I'll talk about next. Okay, last question. What does being agile mean to you? Not doing agile. What does being agile mean to you? Boy, John, that's a big topic. <laughs> we'll talk about that too. But what does being agile mean to you? Continuous improvement, engaging everyone's potential. Flexibility, adapting, learning, respond to change. Love the word respond, right? Not react to change, but respond. Iterate, customer needs at the center, collaboration, transparency. This is great. So again, you can kind of start to connect with each other. Please uh, stay in the chat. Um, I love watching the interactions there. Um, I drew this picture. You can please laugh at your interest. This is for your entertainment. Um, there was an article written back in 1994 in the Harvard Business Review um, and I was, uh, I was still in high school then, so I didn't read it back then, but I did come across it um, about a decade ago. And it started to talk about the idea of the service profit chain to work. And some of the themes that came out of that article were really about, you know, customer success and everyone's focused on customer satisfaction and customer success. But what it did was walk back, how do we get to satisfied, happy customers? And it really starts with the idea of engaging our employees and our workforce. And I don't mean engaging at the level of, you know, yeah, let's yeah. make sure someone have a question. Keep going. doesn't mean engaging at the level of simply initiative based things. I did a talk a few years ago that was titled, how many engagement initiatives does it take to unscrew a burned out culture? I was trying to be a little bit funny there. Um, but the idea is zero, right? We don't want initiatives, right? Because initiatives have beginning and end. Rather, let's figure out what motivates our people, what keeps them engaged. How do we lean into their talents and strengths? Because if we do that well, create shared responsibility and ownership, our customers are going to feel that. And we can all think about experiences we've had as customers where we really could tell that the person was engaged, right? They liked their job. They were helpful. They were compassionate. They did what they could. They were honest, they were courageous, and those companies continue to be very successful. They make the money. But unfortunately, a lot of organizations spend all of their time focusing on the bottom line results, which are important. I don't live in la la land, right? I, I know that that's important. And the companies that continue to thrive, especially those who want to lean into the agile principles um, and different ways of working by using some of these methodologies, it starts with the people. Right. And I was saying to Q before we started, you know, if you kind of look at it, uh, first line of the manifesto, individuals and interactions, more valuable than process and tools. We'll talk about that in a minute as it relates to HR. But again, right, this is kind of a guiding principle for me. And how do you create that attraction culture, right, so that you're not having this ridiculous war for talent, um, attracting future customers, right? People want to give you their money. They want to use your services, and I've worked with a lot of companies that um, everything is separate, right? So we've separated out the idea of who's responsible for engagement and development of people. And we put that in the box of HR. For the next several minutes, I wanna talk about ways to shift the mindset and bring the agile principles and belief systems and approaches into our work in HR and how to start to share ownership, right? Because if you, at the end of the day, if we share the responsibility for culture, for people development, for creating practices that actually meet our needs while still balancing risk and all the laws we have to pay attention to, we might have a better shot at becoming a thriving organization. So that's just to kind of set the stage for this talk. 
Those of you who are in HR, there's a, a governing body, so to speak, of our body of knowledge, which is called the Society for Human Resources Management. This is specific to the U.S., so I, I do apologize if you're here from, from outside the U.S., um, but most of this will ring true. This is the body of knowledge that we get tested on to become certified professionals in HR. If you just like take a gander at that, that's a lot of stuff, right? Running the, the gamut from strategic planning, engagement, development, total rewards, technology. I say to uh, interns when I did uh, campus programming about what do you think HR is? And most of them thought, you know, hiring and firing and payroll and all that good stuff. I was like, yes. And basically everything else, because we literally touch every part of the organization and we affect every single person, right? From the, the person who is entry level, right out of school, maybe their first job ever, all the way up to the CEO. And you get kind of pulled into everything else. Those of you in HR will attest, you get into marketing, communications, finance, supply chain, occasionally logistics, you relocate people all over the globe, and occasionally you have to be responsible for health and safety too. So why do I bring that up? HR is complexity in action. <laughs> um, and so those of you who are more steeped in the world of agile and agile methodologies, um, complexity, right, VUCA, has been a reality for our work in HR since I started it 22 years ago. And I used this visual, it's, it's somewhat dated um, from a company where I was the first HR leader hired into the organization. It was about a thousand people, global organization with no HR, <laughs> which is crazy. That's a story for another day, but I was trying to visual, visualize for them in a nutshell, what are, we, what are we doing? And helping them kind of see, we've got company strategic priorities. We have all the operational stuff we need to do. Uh, we're trying to deliver business results. And oh, by the way, we're trying to also recruit, develop, retain, and engage people. We've got internal partners that we're working with. This is complex. And I think it was eye-opening for that leadership team to say, how are we gonna get this all done? We have a very small team. And we're not looking to grow uh, the team that you've uh, taken on, Beth. So how do we do that? And so this kind of started my journey into thinking about different ways of working. Um, I will share these slides with you. They are posted. But again, I'm setting a little bit of a foundation for why would we want to bring agility to HR. The last thing I'll layer on you is this idea of change. Um, and I, this work is, is uh, based on a book by Peter Senge from the early 90s around creating a learning organization. But a lot of companies, you know, we go into business, you know, I have a small business myself, I provide a service. Um, every company, every organization provides products and services, right? That's a dimension of work. The second dimension of work is in order to do that, right? Um, we have to design processes, systems, we create organizational structures, um, we move people around, we invest and de-invest in different things. The third dimension of work, which is the human side, Right? Thinking about how we think, <laughs> how we all interact, how we feel, how we take action is the dimension that often gets ignored, particularly when companies go down the path of bringing in agile methodologies. And I've watched this happen over the last six or seven years in the work that I've done is that they'll start down a path of where we've done some training, we're trying to use Scrum, we're trying to use Kanban, it's just not working. It must be the process, right? There, there certainly can't be anything about us that is affecting our success with this way of working. And so I give you, again, this, this last layer on top of this to say, why would HR want to embrace agility in service to creating a thriving organization? Um, it's really in service to helping lead this change and seeing that if we're not connecting the dots between our ways of working, how we deliver products and services, how we behave with each other, right? What's our culture look like? What are we tolerating behaviorally? And what are we, what are we doing about it? And how are our people practices in particular, either enabling those ways of working and behaving to sustain or not, right? So to me, it's that the constant threading of the three together. Your culture may be the thing. It might be the reason that the agile ways of working and being aren't, aren't um, successful in your organization. Your culture could actually be disengaging people unintentionally. And that can be for a variety of reasons, like silos, um, lack of decisions being delegated in, not trusting people, treating people like their children, right? I'm, I'm very positive right now, I know. Um, but if one of your challenges is people seem disengaged, or you only think 10% of the, the workforce that you have 
are your key talent, um, you're missing out, right? And when you're looking at turnover and wondering what's happening, it could be behavioral things that are going on. And then you start layering in agility and change in general, it can really start to take a toll on people. So I want to take us on a tour of something that I, I deeply believe in. Um, when I got to work with uh, Agile people uh, starting three years ago, um, one of the things we started to talk about were the Agile people principles. Um, and these principles are not meant to be anything other than additive to your view of what is being Agile. A practical thing that I would offer for you to take is taking this set of values, right? These principles, these things that we think are important to creating an agile culture and do an assessment and do a self-assessment with yourself. Where do you feel like you're good, right? Where do you personally feel like you're strong? Ask your team, like, what are we really good at? Which of these principles might get in our way uh, of being successful in our shift to being a more agile organization? Um, I'd be remiss to not give a shout out. Uh, Mike, I know you're on the phone somewhere. Hi, Mike. Uh, Mike Lieber, he's a great expert in this space too. We, uh, a group of 35 of us got to write a book last year together on these principles. I see me in the middle there. Um, I wrote the chapter on self-organization. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, please reach out uh, and we'll take you into this. But the principles are the first thing, right? So if you're starting to go on this journey, whether you want to apply this to HR or you're an HR uh, team member who's supporting the organization making these shifts, this is a great quick check and assessment to see where the principles are serving you well. Okay, time for a check, check in on the chat. And I'm going to wrap us up. I'm going to go pretty quick so we have time for questions. In your company today, where would you place your current people, ops, and organization as it relates to Agile methodologies and mindset. Let's see some votes. So A, A through D, let's see what you come up with. Okay, some A's. Okay, Charlotte looks like a C. Trying to understand, that's great. Lots of A's so far. A's and C's, a couple B's. Right. Some of this is, we support it, right? But we don't want to be involved. <laughs> um, or we support it. Um, but I'm kind of curious, but I don't think it applies to us, right? And one of the first questions I'll ask to leaders outside of HR that I work with is what has stopped you from bringing your HR partners in? And you get all kind of fun answers about that. And it's like, well, wait a minute, this is going to fundamentally change the way you team, the way you hire, the way you incentivize, the way you think about performance management, the way you think about engagement, it's all going to change. And if you don't involve early, you'll start to bump up against it and you will have tension. Um, and that tension can be avoided by engaging early and often. So think of it this way, and I'll move through this quickly and I'm gonna share one uh, case study with you of, of where I've put this to work. Our product from HR, this is a mindset that I've held for a long, long time, is the entire employment experience, right? It is not anything other than that. And that employment experience starts from when we post jobs and we're trying to draw people to us through and past the exit process, whether someone is exiting because they chose to, they're retiring, or we've asked them to leave. There's a continuous flow that we have to think about. And, and what I encourage you to start to think about, this is your second takeaway, is starting to shift your mindset from HR projects and initiatives, right, to in service to our product. Who are we creating value for? Who are we creating this value with? And I know for me personally, the more I can reach across boundaries and bring people together, the better. And I've also worked in HR organizations where the partnerships across HR are not healthy. <laughs> and um, the, the organization feels that, right? And if you have a one HR initiative going on in your company, that might be a red flag. <laughs> um, not that you're bad, but that you have some challenges ahead. But, you know, Burson has put some great work out over the last several years, kind of starting to look at the entire um, ecosystem of the employment experience. And a lot of times HR folks will take this on as this is our job and we're responsible for all of this. I'm gonna challenge your thinking and then I'm gonna show you that it's possible with the right leadership and, and courage. The idea that you can actually shift your model to do a more co-creation approach to HR solutions. Now I respect that certain industries, I've worked in healthcare, I've worked in financial services, I've worked with the federal government. There are certain things that we just have to do in a standard way to mitigate risk and to keep the companies out of, uh, or the organizations out of trouble. And there's a lot of things that don't have to be standardized. So the mindset shift that I bring forward to you is thinking about sharing ownership. 
Uh, how do we co-create the right a structure for our company or for our division or our department? How do we think about engagement differently and actually working collaboratively with our customers? Does this sound familiar, practitioners of Scrum? Work with our customer, right? Bring the employees and managers in and help develop them, help share the ownership of HR. And the other thing about the product of HR, a lot of our product has been moved into technology. Won't have time to get into this deeply. There are thousands, as you know, of uh, companies that have spun up over the last 20 years that are in service to helping HR become more efficient, maybe more effective, maybe freeing up some of the transactional excellence and also not necessarily agile in all of their approaches when they start implementing these solutions with you. So if you are working for one of these companies, start to think about how you implement and how you can model the principles when you're bringing technology in. And if you're a practitioner of HR, don't assume that the technology is going to help deal with the cultural things that you're working through. Okay, Q, I know I'm gonna wrap up. So think of it this way. This is your second takeaway, mindset shift projects to products, who's getting value from this work? How are you involving them? And this could be super scary, but I'm going to tell you my fast story cue if I can, and then we can open it up for questions. Are we okay? Absolutely. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Last thing. So my journey, right? I, I, I drink my, uh, I drink my own Kool-Aid because I have to, I have to prove it to myself that it can work. Um, Last year with Scrum Inc, we created the Scrum and HR class and we've had about 60 people come through it so far from all different uh, types of organizations. These are some of the quotes that came out of the class. Everything from, now I know what's happening around me so I can be more conscious of it, I had no idea, to now I understand why our implementation was so terrible, right? We weren't using this mindset or this approach. And again, not to sell Scrum as the only solution, it was wildly helpful for people to start to think about, can I scrum it? And that kind of has become our theme song of can I scrum it? <laughs> and the answer was, yes, you can. But folks have to come to that conclusion themselves. Um, this is a fast example. Back in 2005, I worked for a large global uh, kind of complicated business that was in the engineering, construction, manufacturing, maintenance type company. And essentially we were tasked with creating a brand new employee manager self-service technology platform without, without being allowed to buy anything new. So we had to use what we had. <laughs> and so in collaboration with all the business units, uh, had some SQL developers in house, myself and a few others, we chipped away over, you know, about a year and a half to two years, um, pacing, going 100% paperless using JD Edwards, which if you've ever seen that, it's a green screen, SharePoint, and just a lot of people getting involved to 100% automate every single HR transaction across the five division multinational company. And it was awesome. And it was fun. And as I look back on it, we scrummed it, which was great. Uh, coming into some other companies, we've used uh, Kanban. This should look familiar to many of you. I, I joined a smaller company. They had two people in HR with no experience, and we had the wall of madness, as we called it. And we used uh, Kanban to just help us day to day look at our work and our, our flow. Um, this also helped me as the leader make a case for getting additional people to join our team. The other thing we did, this is a fast case study. Again, you'll have access to these slides. We also had a lot of opportunities uh, to add features to our people practices that we didn't have in place before. But with a very small team, I started to figure out a model. Please again, laugh at my drawings at your interest to figure out where we had outsource partners who I could look at as an extension of our team and kind of get more work done with them. And then starting to look at our strategic initiatives as how can we spin up scrum teams? And so we ended up having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight scrum teams going um, in this small company that was made up of primarily employees and managers who had a vested interest, whether it was compensation, re-implementing our system, which was this one. Um, and it also brought those people in to get development. So we were able to help them think about things like budgeting, um, implementations, change leadership, and we just went through this, this process, you know, and, and after four weeks, we had all the employees punching in and out, non-exempt workforce. They weren't clocking in and out, very risky, but their teammates went to them to get them to do it. It wasn't Beth saying you have to do this or else. Change the mindset. Quick product backlog examples. Again, happy to talk about how we did this. 
And these are six other examples that I would share of where I've been using these mindsets uh, and methodologies as well. So anything from compensation framework design, employment brand creations, using it in M&A due diligence. And the reason we did that was really to just think about how do we get more fingerprints on things? How do we share ownership? And if you're in a large HR organization, silo busting within HR, awesome way to create a really great work, workplace is because you're involving your customer because everyone in the company is a customer of HR, including you as the HR practitioners yourselves. So if you take that mindset from this talk, what I'd love for you to do is just start to think about the last step of prioritizing your backlog and seeing where you could potentially do an experiment. So with that, I'll ask you in chat, think about your 15% from this talk. I know it was fast and we went really quickly, but what can you do? What can you do right away without needing any additional permission, approval, resources, not people, because remember, people aren't resources, we're people. And uh, what, what's your takeaway? If you'd like to share that in the chat, otherwise I'll say thank you for being here. I see some great questions popping in the chat and appreciate you taking time to be with me and letting me share my passion.